I wish to refer members to my register of interest as a practicing NHS GP. Minister Eleanor Whitton states in her motion that the Scottish Government is required to use every lever at its disposal to save and improve lives. But have they? Well, they haven't since the 16th of May 2007 when the SNP took office. And they didn't even as they watched the upward trend in drug misuse skyrocket from 2013. Now, let's just consider one of the levers the Minister speaks of. If the SNP were serious about exploring how to introduce a pilot drug consumption room, we know that they could have done this much earlier. That is, if they really wanted to. We now know they didn't need the UK government to devolve any powers to Holyrood in order to pilot this initiative. So it does make one consider, presiding officer, that the SNP instead preferred to stoke grievance and blame Westminster rather than do something. Perhaps former Health Minister Joe Fitzpatrick would want to correct the record given what Michael Mara told us. Sue Webber reminded us that the Scottish Government have not met their own MAT standards for drugs and also the devastating effect caused by heinous gangs forcing families out of their homes. I thank Jackie Bailey for supporting Douglas Ross's Right to Recovery Bill. I agree with her that this is not a silver bullet, but it is part of the solution to help people get off drugs and alcohol. Colette Stevenson spoke bravely about her own personal experience, and I strongly agree with her, Brian Whittle and Audrey Nicholl, about the amazing role the third sector can and does play. Russell Finley is absolutely correct in saying normalisation of drugs is unforgivable. Which brings me on to Alex Cole Hamilton, who spoke about Portugal, as did many SNP members. The Washington Post in July this year is reporting that police are blaming a spike in the number of people using drugs for a rise in crime, plus overdose rates hitting a 12-year high. Porto's mayor said, and I quote, these days in Portugal, it is forbidden to smoke tobacco outside a school or a hospital. It is forbidden to advertise ice cream and sugar candies. And yet, it is allowed for people to be there injecting drugs. We've normalized it. This is not a Scotland I want to see. Sue Webber reminded us that Portland, Oregon decriminalized drugs in 2021 where they actually recorded a sharp rise in overdose deaths and an explosion in crime. Their Public Safety Commissioner has implored Scotland to avoid the tragedy that they are going through. Now, Minister Eleanor Whitton said in her, contribu in her contribution that this experience did not count because this was all they did. But may I remind the Minister that Ballot Measure 110 in Portland also directed marijuana tax dollars for addiction services, which accounted to $265 million. Despite this, they are reversing it. Annie Wells spoke passionately about addictions and went on to say that savage cuts to rehab led to an explosion of drug deaths. And it's right to say, how can the SNP possibly ask for more laws when they don't even use current laws. And I want to remind members that drugs do harm. It is not just deaths. I have patients coming to see me with significant health harms from drug use. So-called soft drugs like cannabis can cause psychosis, depression and dependence. Drugs cost money. They are very expensive. People using drugs need to spend more and more money on drugs. And this spend is above everything else and all others. Above heating for their children, above food for their children, above time for their children. Drugs do harm. Never forget. Presiding officer, let me return to the matter of levers. We've spoken a lot about supervised drug injection facilities. But what about other levers? 
What about helping people to get off drugs, treatment, rehabilitation? How's that going? Not very well, actually. The SNP instead cut £19 million from addiction services despite year in, year out record deaths, shamefully ripping away funding from frontline services. They don't like to talk about this, do they? That's why it suited them well to deflect from their own failures and blame Westminster for blocking drug consumption rooms. As for tackling drug dealers, those who prey on our most vulnerable, well, the SNP really is championing a caring and compassionate drugs policy here. The SNP considers criminals under the age of 25 not mature enough to be treated as adult criminals, though mature enough to make other types of decisions. A 21-year-old cocaine dealer, twice caught trying to shift Class A drugs, which would usually result in a six-month custodial sentence. Well, he avoided jail due to the SNP's compassionate sentencing guidelines. If the SNP is serious about being caring and compassionate, they'll commit to ensuring that any Scot who asks for treatment and rehab will get it, and get it in a timely fashion. Backing a fully-fledged right to recovery bill is the way to go. The route to avoid, however, is to simply decriminalise drugs. At a time when highly dangerous synthetic opioids are now on the streets, decriminalisation will simply make it easier for drug dealers and organised crime gangs to operate. And let's not forget, we know the gangs even traffic children as mules to move small quantities around. Let's not drop our guard any further. Presiding officer, uh, my time is running out and I would like to remind the minister in her closing speech to please answer the question Sue Webber put to her a couple of hours ago. These questions are how are drug consumption rooms going to work practically? Will there be independent assessors looking at the data? Will the methodology be made public? And what are the success criteria? Implementation is key. And it is, a com it is incumbent upon the government to have a transparent and clear approach when it comes to the pilot. Thank you.